Brett, on the blue platform, All Jerry right. Torres. I've and a little record attempt for Jerry Torres. I've got Torres. another person here with me. I'm, I'm going to let him introduce Brett himself and tell you guys who he is and what he does and how you can get a hold of his product. So go ahead, let everybody know who you are, please. Guys, uh, my name is Edward Koo, um, half owner of Iron Rebel. Uh, you know, we supply powerlifters with uh, arguably the best uh, powerlifting gear, apparel, hats. Just recently got into the uh, powerlifting world. Got some great athletes in, uh, in the bodybuilding world. John Meadows, Fuadabia, Dusty Hanshaw, Jose Raymond. Uh, really make a foothold in, uh, in that arena. But um, our original love is still powerlifting, and our origin is powerlifting. And, um, you know, myself, um, powerlifted for years from uh, 1994 to 2010. Uh, got into bodybuilding the last five years just because of injuries. But getting back into watching these competitions, uh, definitely fell back in love with powerlifting. So um, it's, it's just awesome to watch, you know, these great guys here uh, and gals from Thursday to today, um, you know, killing some PRs, world records, and whatnot. Inspiring. And what got you into, what, what made you want to be a part of Iron Rebel? What was it? Well, initially I didn't want to be a part of Iron Rebel. Um, you know, I, I think, um, I didn't really want to be in the industry. I didn't want to be in the bodybuilding industry. I didn't want to be in the powerlifting industry. It's, uh, it's my hobby. It's my love. I didn't want to involve myself into something that I considered doing as my primary hobby. Um, it would take all the fun away. But I think uh, when Shelly approached me and we started talking about it a little bit, um, I saw a lot of upside to Iron Rebel. Um, I knew, and I know this sounds like a cliche or some type of cheap advertisement, but I knew Iron Rebel had quality products. I knew that. I knew the performance was there. Um, I just knew they were just a smaller type of company, a lot of upside. Um, so I thought I kind of divulged it to, to, to seeing what they had, what arenas they were in, and um, once I did that, I saw a lot of potential in Iron Rebel. It was such a good product. Um, I don't think that, you know, there are some good products out there. There certainly are, you know, but I thought there were other things that we could have offered that some other companies couldn't have, the current crop. And uh, I think we kind of did that, and um, you know, we just kind of been on a rip and tear the last four months. Now, what, can you tell the people that are listening and watching what what is it? What was the change that kind of created this? Just <laughs> well, um, I'm sure, most people know. I mean, when I came in, I basically just uh, you know I flipped Iron Rebel inside out. I, we read, I redid uh, the look. The branding, the identity of Iron Rebel, um, so everything. So it's kind of a we just re reborn the company, and um, I think Iron Rebel lacked a, 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 the brand awareness or the uh, the identity um, that we have today. You know, Iron Rebel was just kind of just floating out there. Shelly did a a great job. I give her a lot of credit just for being kind of a one or two man operation. Um, she's done a great job, and she you know she brought me in to, to grow grow it more and um, and it just um, it didn't have any appeal no identity again um, so when I came in I immediately got uh, some of the most respected people in the bodybuilding area you know John Meadows first and foremost and when we got John and Fuad and all the bodybuilders our identity was created um, it was a gritty hard-working um, real intense uh, guys with the highest integrity, fan favorites uh, of the bodybuilding world. And I'm a, I've been a, in the bodybuilding industry for years. So for me, it was an easy pickup that I picked up these four guys. They're my favorite guys. And ironically, they're everyone's favorite guys. So it was easy when we announced all four guys at Iron Rebel. In one day, uh, the whole bodybuilding industry, uh, they reacted like, oh my God, who's this company? Where did they come from? And um, that's kind of how it was. You know, everyone thought that we are a brand new company. And, um, you know, I reminded uh, our bodybuilders that this company has been in existence uh, for about five years. And the only reason they're hearing about it now is because we just went into the bodybuilding industry with some heavy, heavy hitters. I mean, we didn't just announce that we we're going in and, and just tiptoe in. We came in with bazookas blazing, <laughs> announcing some big athletes. So um, we've definitely got a foothold in, in the bodybuilding industry and in the powerlifting industry. And, you know, we just want to we bring good products out there, you know. And I think 
um, you know, without too much marketing, you get a lot of feedback on social media. You get feedback on reviews. If you Google us, Google Iron Rebel uh, reviews or quality, we don't have to quite tell everyone about our quality or our customer service or how our products perform. Everybody here at this competition will tell you the difference between our wraps against someone else's wraps or our gears or whatever. We're also bringing everything back into the United States. Um, everything, you know, as far as our gear wise, is going to be made in the United States. And a lot of gear companies, I'd say, uh, I'd say about like 90% of the gear companies, everything's made offshore China, Pakistan, India. And um, you lack uh, quality control uh, because different manufacturers, like in China, they'll switch out different fabrics or rubbers under under your nose, you won't really know about it until you have it and the lifters have it and they're thinking, what, this is different from the wraps I just ordered last month. And having everything here in the United States manufacturing, yeah, the cost is going to be a little higher, um, but the quality is going to be there. And we have the uh, we have the opportunity now to kind of switch things on a whim, quickly switch, you know, be very, uh, you know, it's a dynamic world. Everything's changing so quickly. And you have to be nimble in business and especially in this in this business you know if something's not working or lifters aren't reacting to your product we have the ability to change quickly and to make something that everybody loves so i think that's a big plus on our part right now that we've been working on but so we switched everything up you know from the from branding identity sourcing production um signing some awesome athletes i mean just in the four months the big four pro bodybuilders that we signed Huge, but then we got Malik Durstein, you know, and he's done a phenomenal job. He's arguably the, you know, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this, but arguably one of the best pound for pound uh, powerlifters out there. Um, he's got a 594 coefficient, which is number two on the list next to uh, Malinichev. Yeah, I mean, what other guy walking around at 181 is benching 532 or 27 right. right at 180? Keep in mind this too, and, and I just started coaching him just recently. He, he all his lifts yesterday were all considered, in, in a lot of a lot of people's opinion, including mine, were second attempts. All his yeah. third attempts, Could have been second. Were, yeah, were second attempts. They were just none of them were struggles, and our goal was just a total 1950. Um, we, he has so much potential, and looking at his training, looking at his diet, everything that he's doing, you know, I always say I can. I could flip him inside out, and that was the goal. So the goal was to come here. We had a plan, executed it, um, and our next plan is Fit Expo in a couple weeks in January. And uh, LA Fit Expo. Yeah, and I and I think and you'll be there. And I we are saying uh, we're planning on totaling 2,000 at 181 raw. And, uh, you know we'll do an interview for that one, right? Of course, yeah, of course, we'll yeah, absolutely. We'll right absolutely. Right we also actually got uh, Micah Marino as an ambassador, a new ambassador program. And you know, I, I know Micah comes off as a little, you know, cocky sometimes. People say he's cocky, he's this and that, and I, I think he just he lives with a lot of emotion. He's an emotional guy. He really is. And some people kind of see that as cocky. So did I at times. But sitting down with Micah last night at dinner this morning at breakfast get to know him he's just he's extremely emotional when it comes to, like Chris Papillon same way and people see that as, as, as cocky which is fine you know I just see as an emotional guy and um, he understands that you know he wants he wants to tone it down to, to, to better himself as well he's, he, he's not really a cocky guy he's just very emotional again so I think people kind of Instead of jumping to the conclusions and not really knowing and being an outside looking in, you should really get to know the person first before you kind of come to conclusions and start blasting people on forums. Yeah, I haven't talked to him much. Uh, I, I see him a lot, but I don't talk to him much. And this morning he came up to me and said, Hey man, how you doing? I said, Good. He said, You tired? He said, yeah, I'm, I'm a little tired. Uh, he goes, Why can't you get you some coffee? You need anything? No, I'm good. Thanks for asking. He texts me and asks me, he's going to the store, do you want anything? I'm like, huh? You want? <laughs> and uh, he's, he's always, uh, you know, even at breakfast, he was talking about Malik. All good things about Malik. You know, Malik's a badass when he went He's getting a total 2,000. No one's going to touch him. Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, he got, he, got beat, he got beat by Malik yesterday. And the good, and the, 
the thing that I saw, what we saw in bodybuilding about a month ago at the Phoenix Europa, uh, Dusty Hanshaw is one of our athletes, and Jose Raven is one of our athletes, big time bodybuilders. And they're friends, um, they're actually close friends from a previous sponsor they were sponsored by together. And you had Jose Raymond uh, just finish up the Olympia, came up runner up at the Mr. Olympia 212s, flew to Korea and uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia, to do two more shows internationally, flew back to Jersey, flew all the way from the East Coast to the West Coast to be at Dusty Hanshaw's pro debut in bodybuilding because they're best friends. Not only did he fly there, he competed with Dusty on the same stage. And for Jose to do a show, smallest show like that, just in support of his best friend, you never see that in bodybuilding. It never. So when we that happened, it got a lot of attention, a lot of media about how our rebel guys, our athletes, that's the thing we, we love and we press upon and we're, you know, it's, it's things that we brag about. Our athletes, you see them, they are known for their intensity. They train their asses off, right? That's what they, their, their videos. But they are all family guys, all guys of the highest integrity. And that's what we love about them the most. So when Jose did this, it was great. And then when you watched Micah and, and Malik compete yesterday, um, I saw something developing too, and it, they both agreed. It's, at the end of the um, Micah's two pools, he was having a bad day. Everyone was yelling, and the guy was yelling real loud. And I looked towards the bottom. You had Malik on his knees, all fours, yelling at Micah to get the lift. And I looked, and Malik still had another lift to go to get a deadlift. And I told Malik, get back there and rest up. And he was just yelling. And then, of course, the third attempt came out. He was there yelling. And uh, I didn't have to. I didn't want to. Say, you know, I didn't have to say to anybody. You know, I talked to Micah and I said, "Do you realize Malik was right there yelling?" And when I said that, you could see Micah's face. His reaction was like, "Wow, you know, really, you know." And at dinner, you know, those two hit it off. And it's one of those things that you, you can't stage that. You can't even put something like that together. It reminded me of Jose and Dusty supporting each other. And then you see. You know, with, with Micah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, the lifter just passed the out. The lifter just passed out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's okay, he's okay. Just get his yeah. off of him. Yeah. Uh, he's got to get his breath. Yeah, he's got to get his breath. He'll be all right. He's just... I've seen that happen to a lot of lifters, including myself. You just need a couple seconds to get your win back. He yeah, he's fine. He's got smiles. So, well, anyway, so I see Micah and uh, Malik, kind of a friendship. They talk very highly of each other, uh, even this morning. And um, coincidentally, they're both going to be at the Fit Expo, at the LA Fit Expo, competing on the same platform. One is a 165er, Micah, and, of course, Malik is a 181er. And uh, I'm also going to help Micah the same way with Malik. And um, we're looking for an 1,800 plus total out of Micah, raw. Right. So these two guys are definitely going to be very top at 181, 1865. Um, you know, going for pound for pound, each one being the best lifter for lightweights. And uh, I'll be there on behalf of them. I'll be there doing more interviews. This is something that I've started doing that I thought people at home would like. They would like to see interviews. They would like to hear what people got going on. I pulled lifters off the platform. I, yesterday after Malik's squat, I interviewed him. And then I, I, I did a little deadlifting coaching with Steve Goggins. But what I found was that I, I like talking to lifters about their performance, what they got going into it, how they're feeling as it's going, and then recapping. I think there's something to that so that the people at home can feel like they're really here with them. They're really here with me. They're really here with us. And I would love, love to do an interview with those two right before they compete, before they switch their mindsets. And then when it's all over with it, you know, you sit down and we'll all sit down together and we'll talk about, you know, what went into this and how they felt and how they felt to compete against each other, how they pulled for one another and 
why that makes the sport so great, you know, the camaraderie and the, everybody cheering for everyone else, you know. I think it's the same thing that we did in bodybuilding, you know, we're, we've got this good guy thing, uh, good guy seminar, big seminar in Connecticut in January, right before the Phoenix Pro. We got 12 pro bodybuilders lined up, a uh, huge weekend seminar, and it's a movement that they credit Iron Rebel for us starting, uh, for getting these four athletes on our team, and it's a movement that... Um, it's not something I plan to start. It's just I think we started by virtue of getting these athletes together. And um, in powerlifting, I don't see anything like that. But I think, you know, with Malik and, and Micah, I think it was perfect how Micah bombed out. Or else that would have never developed. You know, you wouldn't have Malik right there supporting him, kind of asking how Micah's doing throughout the day. I said, why? Are you worried that Micah's going to beat you? And he goes, no. And I was like, oh. he was genuinely like, you know, is he okay? You know, and I was like, wow. So I just saw this developing the whole day, not really thinking what was going on until last night. And I go, this is another Dusty Jose situation where now they'll be training. You know, I'll, I'll be, Tim, my coaching both of them. You know, I, I can't be there in person, but talk about training and dieting and stuff like that. But you'll see their relationship kind of develop over the next 10 to 12 weeks going into the Fit Expo and the fact that they're both there you know it's great I think it's great I think powerlifting needs this kind of stuff you know and I told the people at home that I would be going to the LA Fit Expo doing another broadcast and then I would like to get some of the uh, bodybuilders that Iron Rebel has and I'd like to sit them all down and I'm going to straight up be a meathead with them and talk to them about their training and I'm, you know and I'm probably going to be eating food in front of them you know? I think, you know, uh, you know, you know, us powerlifters, uh, at least half of us, <laughs> right? <laughs> at least half of us are bodybuilding fans, you know? There's all... <laughs> right, I mean, we're all... Exactly, we are. We just don't want to diet. <laughs> we just don't want to diet and we hate cardio. It's, uh, hey, it is. No, but I mean, uh, you know, I see half these guys know who John Meadows is. They know who Jose Raymond is. They know, they know these guys. So, yeah, absolutely. Powerlifters would love to meet these guys. And ironically... The bodybuilders want to meet these guys. They want to meet Malik. You know, they want to meet Micah. They want to meet Susan. They're like, oh my God, you know. They're phenomenal lifters in their own right. You know, and what we've, Iron Rebel, been able to do is cross brand the athletes, bring the power lifters, and bring them into the power lifting, or in the, um, they bring the power lifters into the bodybuilders. World. So now everybody knows who Garrett Griffin is, they know who Derek Kendall is. They know, and when I was talking to Garrett the other day, I said, what do you think? We're getting a lot of bodybuilders' attention. He goes, Hey man, I love it. He goes, my following's gone up. Everyone knows who I am. You know, it's like they, they you know, it, they grow with each other. You know, and likewise, some of the powerlifters that don't know who the bodybuilders are, now they who they know who they are. They're the big, big names. So I, it helps both sides. I think you know, just with Iron Rebel, and you know, I tell our athletes, just being part of Iron Rebel is you get the you get the PR, you get the marketing, you get the brand awareness. But you get the identity of Iron Rebel. When you become an athlete, you're already seen as an athlete of integrity, uh, a, a hardcore, you know, you train your ass off, just by virtue of, of, of being with us. Uh, and that's kind of why we're very selective as far as who we bring on, because you've got to fit in. You've got to fit in uh, with, our, with our group. All our guys are, and gals, I know I, I, I say it all the time, they're really great guys. They'll sit here and chop it up with you any day of the week, have a beer with you, whatever, you know. It's the kind of guys we have, you know. Yeah, and I, I told them I wanted to be a part of it however I could, and that my suggestion would be at the LA Fit Expo, which you're the man. You, you, guys, you guys get everybody together, and I'll do the interview, and we'll blow the roof off the platform. We will bring the bodybuilders. The power lifters, the best of both worlds, will bring the one platform, and we'll do a live interview, and we'll open up the chat for people at home. I think that's a great idea, as it, you know, just for the uh, audience to uh, for their information. We've got Fuad Abiyad. He's never, um, I don't think he's ever made an appearance on the on the West Coast. His fan base is huge, so we definitely want to give him a, a, in LA, and we expect a big audience just for him alone. Of course, Dusty Hanshaw, always a fan favorite. So you've got Dusty Hanshaw and Fuad at our booth. And then you've got all the power lifts. You've got Garrett, Susan, um, Brandon Allen, Micah, Malik. <laughs> it's a big show. Yeah, it's, all our guys are going to be at the Elliott Expo. And I, and I, when I saw Fuad, I was like, 
know, I suggest we get them all together. We get them all on the platform. We will. Absolutely. We get them all on the platform. We get a freaking table up there on the platform, and we talk. And we talk for a half hour to an hour, and then open it up to people at home that are watching the live stream to type right, in questions right in the Kind of like a press conference. I, I love that idea. Like a low-budget press conference. Might not be low budget anymore. <laughs> it may not be low budget anymore. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing here, but I'm figuring it out as I go. So. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah. If, if people want to buy Iron Rebel products, how do they do that? Just go online. Go uh, www.ironrebel.com. Um, you know, sell online. We have a couple brick and mortar uh, locations. Just go to our dealer list. You know, click on the dealers. Put in your zip code. Um, we're careful regarding dealers. Uh, we get a lot of dealer requests, which is very careful because we want to keep the integrity of the company, keep the integrity of the brand. We don't want people getting our brand and selling it for next to nothing and uh, diluting diluting our brand with our other dealers. So, um, you know, we have about we have a few dealers across the across the United States to uh, buy from and. Of course, you buy online. We ship fast anywhere in the United States. Usually takes you know anywhere from one to one to five business days, depending on the West Coast or East Coast. So, so they go online. Is there any other way to get products? Or is that it? Just go online, put ironrebel.com, and order what you want. And you know, we um, we're on Amazon.com. Okay. So but, Amazon. Yeah, but we might we might cut that pretty soon. <laughs> you know, we Amazon actually they contacted us. Their head guy, uh, one of their it's called Amazon Prime. I'm a, I'm a Prime member. I'm sure everyone in the audience is an Amazon Prime member. And uh, it was a big thing for us. I thought we really hit it when they asked us to be uh, Amazon Prime members of the company. Like they would buy our inventory, store it in their warehouse, and ship straight from Amazon. And we declined them. Um, just think we could do a better job. So. Well, man, uh, I really, I know you're a busy man, and I appreciate your time. I wanted people at home to get to know you know who you were. I wanted to get to know you a little bit, and I promised uh, I promised people at home I'd bring Iron Rebel to the table, and I did. Right Here on, I are. did a great job. Thank, Thank you, you Gary. Thanks Appreciate it. Yeah, All on. right. Yep. All right. Seven hundred twenty-two.